Lilia Asmanova likes to joke that coffee's good for one's nerves. And these days, her family needs nerves of steel. Ever since the power went out across the annexed Crimean Peninsula, Tatar families like the Asmanovs say they've been coming under suspicion. Many Crimeans blame Tatar activists for blowing up the transmission lines. Mistrust prevails. The Russians aren't saying explicitly that it was the Crimean Tatars, but they refer to bandits and then I us in an accusing way. Others say we should just leave here and move to Ukraine. Why? We're staying put. No one can intimidate us. We're used to misery. We'll survive this too. Getting by without electricity is a challenge facing everyone here, not just Crimean Tatars in Bakhshisarai. It's one of the settlements built in the 1990s for ethnic Tatars returning to their ancestral homelands after decades in forced exile. At this local hospital, at least the lab and some vital equipment are functioning. But only because the director was able to fire up two emergency generators. They're not really enough. We were only able to use our X-ray machine two days in the last two weeks. The authorities grant us a little electricity for emergencies, but only for a few hours at night when we don't need it. Without electricity, the winter nights in the Crimean capital, Simferopol, are especially dark. A few days ago, a new power line connecting Crimea to the Russian grid went into operation. But that's not enough. The peninsula clearly needs more electricity. Only those with their own generators can turn on their lights, and they're in the minority. It's dark in Crimea, gloomy. Most of Crimea's two million people have been hit by the power cut and they are still facing this blackout. Public transport is still running and hospitals are using generators, but the power cut plunged the streets of Crimea into darkness. That's why it's hard to find our way back to the Asmanov's house. The generator is too noisy for a conversation outdoors, so we're brought into their cozy kitchen. The neighbors who can't afford a generator often drop by to chat with us and play cards. Lily Asmanova is holding out hope that the blackout will at least help bring the people of Crimea a little closer instead of stirring up more hate and suspicion.